Hi guys, Harbs and Harbs here. Iolum, the ancient Netherese arch wizard who became an elder brain, is a popular theory with regards to the origin of the tadpoles. It's popular for obvious reasons, given that our tadpoles have a link to Netherese magic, and even the Baldur's Gate 3 logo looks a little undeadish. I made a theory video on Iolum in the past, and the link to that is in the description below. It's the one I have put a lot of stock in, but what about some other undead mind flayer theories, specifically involving Orcus? I don't really fully believe this theory over Iolum or even just the mind flares of Arundel or the other many theories I have, but it is an interesting one. This theory is outlandish, bizarre and possibly full of holes, but it is something worth considering. Okay, let's go. The 5th edition adventure, Out of the Abyss, puts the player characters in the Underdark, which has been overrun by demons. I won't go into the specifics in case you are currently playing that adventure, but Out of the Abyss already has some links to Baldur's Gate 3, namely the Society of Brilliance. In Out of the Abyss, there is a mind flare in the Society of Brilliance called Grazilax, and an Orog called Blurg. In Bola's Gate, there is a mind flare called Amelum with the exact same backstory as Grazilax, and they have changed Blurg into a hobgoblin instead of an Orog. I did another video on this, which you can find below. Anyway, in the adventure, the player characters can make their way to a place in the Underdark called Graven Hollow, which is a grand library run by stone giants. According to Out of the Abyss, the library is suffused with magic that warps the space within it, and which makes navigating and exploration a unique challenge. Each room on each level of Graven Hollow is part of either the archives of the past, the archives of the present, or the archives of the future. The library consists of echoes of every person that has passed and will pass through the library. For example, the players can see a vision of Elminster who will go to the library in the future, and he imparts some wisdom to the player characters but cannot impart too much wisdom regarding the future. It's classic time travel stuff. Prior to this point in time, somewhere in the past, the timeline skewed into this tangent. Ultimately, the archives of the future are uncertain, primarily because they deal with futures that may not come to pass. In the adventure, if the players stand in one of the archives, future, present or past, with something called a stone speaker crystal, they can have a vision. One of these visions is as follows. In the heart of an alien cavern glistening with slime, scores of mind flares gather around an enormous brain resting in a pool. The brain is dead. You can hear the illithid's incomprehensible thoughts as they mourn its passing. One word echoes louder than the others. Syrog. Suddenly, Fejres bathes the dark and twisted hall in purplish light. A rift opens and a hulking horned figure that reeks of putrescence steps out. It raises a skull-tipped wand and points it at the dead elder brain. The elder brain begins to pulsate, and you see intermittent flashes of purple light under its rotting flesh. The mind flares are aghast as the elder brain speaks to them once more, telling them that Orcus has saved Syrog, and commanding them to follow it into undeath. The adventure elaborates further that the librarians of Graven Hollow know that Syrog is the name of a distant mind flare settlement. Vizier and Devere and every member of the Society of Brilliance also know that Syrog is named after an ancient elder brain that commands the settlement, which lies deep in the Underdark thousands of miles to the east. If you're not familiar with Orcus, then he is a demon prince and lord of the undead. In Morden Canaan's Tome of Foes, he is quoted as saying, I will be the last creature when I am done, the cosmos will then be perfect, free of the brain abominations that are all living things. I have spoken about someone called Caius before, who in the 5th edition of Volo's Guide to Monsters was rumoured to have been a priest to Orcus. Caius eventually became the Worm That Walks, and in Elder Evil's 2007, it is said that he was an Elder Evil who would usher in a time when the undead will rise and destroy the world. It is also said in Elder Evil's 2007 that cultists of the Dead Three attempted to find an island called Wormcrawl, where Caius resided in the hope that he would resurrect their dead gods, Baal, Bane, and Merkel. This was following the Time of Troubles. 
Although we know how Bane and Baal were resurrected, it is left unclear how Merkel was resurrected, and he is the one most associated with undead and necromancy out of the Dead Three. Is it possible that what Orcus did to Syrog, encouraging the Illithids to follow him into undeath, has something to do with the plot of Baldur's Gate 3, and what we already know to be a plot involving the gods of death, murder, and tyranny? Although the story of Dead 3 cultists seeking out Caius came out in 2007, it is only in 5th edition that it is mentioned that Caius was a priest of Orcus. Like I said before, I still think that Iolum's involvement or an enclave of Illithids like the ones from Orindal, or even ones outside Toril making some kind of deal with the Dead Three is far more plausible than this one. However, the vision in Out of the Abyss is certainly interesting, and I wonder if it will influence future D&D adventures, or whether Syrog will be mentioned in Baldur's Gate 3. But is Syrog the first time that Orcus has taken an interest in the Mind Flayers? No. It's not. In the Planescape supplement Dead Gods 1997, we can see the following regarding Tenebros, a form of Orcus and his hunt for his wand, the wand of Orcus, which had been hidden by two drow slaves. Manzikorian, the illithid keeper of secrets, knew that one of the slaves still dwelt in Kiranisli. Tenebrous ripped that knowledge from its mind before he uttered the last word and destroyed the essence of the illithid god. Its entire Gehenan realm boiled away upon the deity's death, but Tenebrous escaped before he himself was consumed. Manzikorian, also known as the Philosopher, was a mind flayer deity second to Ilsensine. It was the god of illithid secrets and knowledge, and again, according to dead gods, when Tenebrous killed Manzikorian, he bathed in aeons of collected secrets and bits of chant. The death of Manzikorian is expanded upon in an adventure called Dawn of the Overmind, which I spoke about in a recent video that I have linked below. In Dawn of the Overmind, it says the following. This chamber once served as a temple to the god Manzikorian, though no one has set foot in this temple for ages. Since that time, another force has killed the Illithid god. A pale reflection of Manzikorian's power remains in this area, forming a much weakened avatar. This avatar attacks anyone near the door to this temple, and it fights until slain. Once vanquished, the last trace of the Illithid deity's presence will have vanished from the multiverse. This temple can be found upon Penumbria, the old capital of the Illithid Empire before it fell. It is a gigantic Illithid structure built around a star. What is alarming is that the star's size in relation to the structure is the equivalent of a pea in the centre of a plate. This unimaginably large flat disc with a sun at its centre would take centuries to cross. The Illithids no longer reside there and instead it is populated by numerous different civilizations, many former slaves of the Illithid Empire. Those on one side of the disc will have no knowledge of those on the other side. It is a terrifying symbol of the Illithids' former might. Manzikorian is still spoken about in 5th edition, and in Volo's Guide to Monsters, the deity is described as follows. The entity slash concept called Manzikorian embodies a complete comprehension of knowledge. It is a state wherein memories, thoughts, and aptitudes are dredged up from one's mind, not one at a time as needed, but are all laid bare and brought to the fore at once. The perfect memories exhibited by Avaleths have long fascinated mind flayers that emulate Manzikorian, leading to frequent conflict between the two races. Manzikorian, although dead, is treated much like Ilsensine. The Illithids don't particularly view them as deities, but rather as philosophical ideas that they strive to emulate. To the Illithids, they are representations of mental states that the Illithids wish to achieve. However, with Orcus having killed Manzikorian and absorbed much of its knowledge, as well as Orcus having recently raised Syrog from the dead and tempted its mind flayers into the way of undeath, could there be any mention of Syrog and its undead mind flayers in Baldur's Gate 3? When Lazel says this, It is a certainty. I had assumed our parasites served a Geich elder, but I believe they serve a greater master still. A question that burns in my belly day and night. Elders and collectives abide by their own tenets. 
It would require a powerful creed to unite them. And now this voice, this creed, finds our own ears. If it reaches this plane, it may reach others. I think she may be referring to the Dead Three, but as quasi-divine beings, is there a chance that there is a greater power still that is part of a deeper plot? Okay, thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, then do please give me a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!